In statistics one, we covered confidence intervals for means and for uh, proportions. And remember, recall that a confidence interval is about estimating for the population mean or the population proportion by using sample data to give yourself what I used to call a bubble, a leeway room, where you can be 95% confident that the population, standard, the population mean falls within these two values. Um, so we focused a lot of that on stats one, but what we didn't cover was confidence for standard deviation or variance. So confidence intervals for standard deviation or variance are quite different as they do not follow the same formula as means and proportions do. So the requirement of normality is very strict regardless of the sample size as large errors may occur if we do not know that a population is normally distributed or not. And we learned in 8.5 how to test for normality when we do have the actual data set. If we are not given the data set, then we are still bound to um, the word problem itself and whether it mentions it or not. If it doesn't mention it, we will not be able to accurately compute a problem. So we're introducing to you the chi-square distribution. Please be careful and do not call this chi. Um, it is pronounced chi, it is a Greek letter chi. The chi-square distribution is not normally, it's not um, a bell-shaped curve, like we're used to working with the normal distribution. So this is the first distribution that we see that is not a bell shape, um, unlike the Z and the T distributions are bell-shaped. So the chi-square distribution is positively skewed or also known as right skewed. Um, and like the T distribution, it is based on degrees of freedom. So you can see the smaller degrees of freedom, the more high and peaked it is on the right side, or left side rather. And the large degrees of freedom, you can see that it starts to move to the center, um, pushing towards a normally distributed set, but chi squared is definitely skewed right. To use the chi square distribution, we need a chi-square value denoted by the Greek letter chi. So you see this fancy looking capital X is what chi um, symbol looks like. Same thing like when we look at alpha and mu, they have their symbols. Okay, we call this the critical value for the chi-square distribution. Um, there are tables, just like they were tables for Z and T to find critical values, but that is something that our guru can find for us quite simply. So we will use our guru to find the critical values, although our guru does not actually calculate confidence intervals for variance and standard deviations. But the math beyond finding the critical value is quite simple. So when we're taking a look at the chi-square distribution, we can see that chi-square is the point on the horizontal axis that divides the two colors of area. And with an area of alpha to the right, the value of chi-squared depends on the right-hand tail area and the number of degrees of freedom. Now for confidence intervals like we're doing today, our chi-square uh, distribution is, we are going to be calculating between, um, because if you recall the confidence interval is in a between area, you're trying to be confident within the confidence interval. And therefore we will have to calculate the left and the right tail areas to quickly get our uh, chi square critical value. So if we were trying to find it for variance, here is the formula for variance. N minus one is degrees of freedom, if you recall. So whatever the sample size is, subtract one, that's degrees of freedom. S squared is the sample variance and chi squared is the critical value that we will use our guru to find. If we were trying to do a confidence interval for standard deviation, sigma, then notice there's one step difference, and it's the same step that separates variance and standard, standard deviation in general, and that is the square root on both sides. Since chi-square distribution is not symmetric, confidence intervals for population variance and standard deviation do not fit the format of the previous studied confidence intervals, where you added and subtracted a margin of error to a point estimate. And that's why we need the chi-square distribution, and it's also the reason why I didn't cover this in stats one, since this is using a distribution that we use heavily in stats two. So it made more sense to 
introduce chi-square in the second part of the statistics courses. Let's take a look at this example and follow our way through using our guru to find the critical values. So the quality control supervisor of a bottling plant is concerned about the variance of fill per bottle. Regulatory agencies specify the standard deviation of the amount of fill should be less than 0.1 ounce. To determine whether the process is meeting the specification, the supervisor randomly selects 10 bottles, weighs the contents of each, and finds that the sample standard deviation of these measurements is 0.04. Compute a 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation of ounces of fill for bottling plant. Okay, so step one is to identify the sample size. So there were 10 bottles and the standard deviation that was calculated for the sample was 0.04. And alpha, we want our confidence interval to be 95%, making the remaining area in the tails 0 0.05. Remember with confidence intervals, the 95% is a middle area, meaning the left tail has exactly half this total area left, 0 0.025, and the right tail has the same amount, 0 0.025. In order to calculate the confidence interval for the variance, we are gonna use this formula where n minus one is 10 minus one, so our degrees of freedom is nine. Our standard deviation is S, 0 0.04, so we will have to square that in the formula. This numerator we're gonna have to calculate out by hand and divide by the critical value we find in our guru. So in order to use our guru, we would need the degrees of freedom and we would need the area left, the 0 0.025, and in our guru, here are the steps written out to remind you, but I'm going to quickly switch over to the Our Guru screen because instead of talking about what you should do, it makes more sense to show you what you should do. But again, I need to find my Our Guru screen. If it's not the last thing I clicked before I'm in WebEx, then it doesn't always necessarily show itself. Here we go. So again, you're going to want to go to rguru.com and log in. Once you log in, you should get to this screen. So in this screen, we are going to go to the probability simulation and then go to probability, probability calculator, and the continuous calculator. So it's, it's hidden. This is not obvious to find. So you definitely needed these steps in order to find these. Now, make sure for critical values, we want, we want the values. So this says we have the values and we want the probability. That's not what we're looking for. We, want, we have the probability or the area in the tails and we want the values, the critical values. So we're gonna make sure we select this uh, option on top. We are not working in a normal distribution. We are working with chi-square. Our degrees of freedom is nine. Ignore this NCP for now. I'm going to select between tails because I know this is a confidence interval, so the area 95% is in the middle, giving 0 0.025 in the left tail and 0 0.025 in the right tail. And then I click my eyeball, and it gives me my two chi-square critical values. On the left side, it's 2.7, and on the right side, it's 19. Before I switch back to the PowerPoint, I wanted to remind you that there are resources, and this is the same resource page where you find your mini projects. So if you go to stat.hawkslearning.com and you click on our book, which is the Toucan, then here's all the data sets in the book, which we explore when we do mini projects. There are technology instructions, which is what I wanted to show you today. So here we are in 10.4. And if I was like, oh, can I do the whole confidence interval in our guru? We can see confidence intervals for variance. That is not an option here, but you can find critical values in our guru. So here is another step-by-step -step with pictures on reminding you how to find critical values using our guru. So I find that this site, especially broken up by sections is really helpful. So this week we also covered 8.5. So notice that normality plot, we can click the Arguru instructions here, histogram and so on. 
Now let me head back to our PowerPoint so we can finish our calculations. So we've just used our guru to calculate these two chi-squared values, 19 and 2.7. Substituting the values into the formula, we have degrees of freedom 9, our standard deviation, which needs to be squared to become variance. Then we have our uh, right tail here and our left tail here. And if you don't know which side to put these on, then you'll know when you get the numbers down here. Notice that this number is bigger than this number. So if you had them switched, you just have to switch them because it makes you, when you set up an interval, you go smallest to largest. So it doesn't matter. You just make sure you put your smallest on the left and your largest on the right. And this is saying that the variance is within 0 0.00757 and 0 0.00533. So our conclusion would be, however, the problem mentions the tolerance for the standard deviation of fill. So to ensure that we make our interpretation in terms of the problem, to find a 95% confidence for the standard deviation, we take the square root of the endpoints because we need to make sure that the standard deviation is within 0.1 or 0 0.01. Let's go back. I can't remember. 0.1. And it was referencing standard deviation, and we calculated a, an interval for variance. So we take the square root of both sides, giving us 0 0.025275 and 0 0.0730. The 95% confidence interval for the standard deviation of fill for bottles is between 0 0.02 and 0 0.07 ounces, indicating that the process is meeting the specifications of being less than 0.1 since both these numbers are less than 0.1. And that is how you do a confidence interval for variance using a chi-square distribution.